young singer named Justin Moore. We don't do a whole lot of bullshitting up here. We just get up here and play country music. The Justin Moore Podcast is sponsored by Bobcat. Visit them at bobcat.com. I got back into listening to um, Cocaine and Rhinestones. You know, I'd taken a break. I had listened to one or two of the last season. I thought he had stopped. No, he did one in 21, and the last few episodes of that season are in 22. And it's even it's even more hardcore. He he basically did a whole season on George Jones and things offshoots of George Jones. The last one was two, two, two hours and 15 minutes about Dallas Frazier. All about wow. Dallas. Basically, I know everything there is to know about Dallas Frazier. Tyler Mayhenko does a hell of a job with cocaine and rhinestones. But – it's uh, it's 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 more like a history lesson. It's not as entertaining and as fun as the Justin Moore podcast. I'm just putting that out there as we welcome everybody, everybody <laughs> back to this week's show. I uh, had to just go into that. It, it is very entertaining, but not as entertaining as the Justin Moore podcast. So listen to that after you listen to this show. It's it's a uh, it is really good though. It's just complete. It's just not even in the same vein as what we do. I mean, it's completely different, but. If you do have, which we were talking off the air, Jr. has um, has made some and has some coming up uh, long drives. Um, that is, if you've got that, or if you're a truck driver, or if you know you've got long trips or whatever coming up, uh, it is a good one to listen to. There's no doubt yes. about that. Yeah, it's uh, so. it's more like a Ken Burns uh, documentary uh, on a specific topic. But anyway, it was really good. Uh, well, welcome back, everybody. Uh, that gets us going here on the Justin Moore podcast this week, season four, episode ten. Got a uh, got a special guest going to pop on in a little bit with us. Talk about some cool little uh, music, something that uh, everybody's going to know about uh, the day after this podcast drops mm-hmm. this week. But uh, Justin and I are recording today on Monday, which we normally record on Tuesday. Last week we didn't record till Thursday, so we've got a kind of we talked about a little bit on the road this week. It kind of a wonky schedule for us, like a Tuesday Saturday, Tuesday Saturday. That's yeah, not- it's kind of and it, and it's two weeks in a row now, which is just. <laughs> I mean, we never play Tuesday shows ever, and we've got you know this will be two in a row, which is just strange and rarely um, do we do one show on just a weekend night we usually do two shows on a weekend or three that's right and so it, it kind of sucks for 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 me uh because i will have to miss i had to miss kennedy uh her first double header she plays every tuesday night last week it was for a good cause though we were at saint jude which we talked about that show on last week's episode with lee bryce chase rice uh kelly loveless and priscilla block great show but it you know it did make it caused me to to miss her first games of the season uh and then uh obviously her second week uh tuesday games uh, i i had to miss so that kind of sucks but hopefully we're done with that and then it sucks for you because the travel is just just odd you know (laughs) normally you go and you're gone for two three four days whatever you're home for the same but this has been a lot odd, but it's it's a fluke i can't imagine it would happen again the rest of the year hopefully yeah. it doesn't so and like you said though um, we you know we had we went and did a thing with saint jude I can't it's hard to say no to them you know they do so much good and then this week uh, we've got a private show for our um for our armed forces so i mean yeah, same so, kind of thing yeah. you know and this it's actually a makeup for 2020 i believe when we were originally going to do this show this week the one we're about to go do before the show airs um so anyway yeah but it's kind of wonky and then we've got then we've got uh, easter weekend off which will be good i think my um my father-in-law and his wife and my sister-in-law and nephews are coming down um so i'm excited about having that i've got a nice. ton of projects to do now that the weather is decent as i'm sure you do yeah um you know i mean you know right now we're just in ball in ball uh, I, I hate to call it hell because I love it, but I mean, it's like, it's every day or night thing, you know, Sunday practice, uh, you know, if we're not playing during the week or the Saturday, we're practicing, you know, it's yeah. literally every day. 
Yeah. Uh, I mean, we have four kids, so right. I mean, and, and if we had and you love one, it. and as much as you hate it, you love it because this is your dream. Mm. This is it. If you if it wasn't yeah. if it ain't if it wouldn't have been you playing for the Braves this year, the second yeah. best thing would be you being involved with your favorite teams. But the best of all of it has to be it's your own kids. Yeah. It's your kids. So well, I mean, you kind of made you kind of made that point when you were at a practice. I don't know, two three weeks ago, whatever. And you're like, my gosh, look at Justin. He's in his element. Oh, just you know, I, I know I could just see it coaching him up. off of you. Yeah, you're just loving it. And you <laughs> yeah, remind me so, so much of my buddy Eason because when he when I text him, that's it. It's all about Cooper's whatever sports that right now. Right. I, he's the same as you. Uber competitive. <laughs> That was his. I mean, you know, and I just, yeah. I could just see. I just know how awesome it is for y'all to do that. So, um, yeah, it was great. We uh, speaking of man, uh, Ella had her first tournament. That's my oldest daughter. For those out there, I, I think probably by now you guys know, but uh, uh, you know, to the new I, listeners I, out there, yeah, to the new listeners out there, three daughters, twelve, ten, and seven, uh, and oldest to youngest, Ella, Kennedy, Klein. Uh, and then my little boy, South, who's four. Um, but anyway, helping coach all those teams, um, which is just <laughs> – it's nuts. But uh, Ella had her first tournament this past weekend. And, you know, we haven't played a tournament in, you know, since – in eight, nine months, eight, seven, eight months, you know, yeah. whatever it was. Probably early fall. Um, right. Uh, last year <clears throat> and so you know we we really didn't know what to expect we went to a tournament that had i believe maybe 12 14 teams in it and we finished fourth uh nice. which you know really we were we were really happy with i mean obviously would have loved to have won the whole thing but um it, it's amazing you can really see a difference in in the maturity of our kids from you know seven eight months ago to now mm -hmm. and i mean we hit the ball in this tournament probably better as a team than we ever have which is great uh much more disciplined at the plate than we've ever been which is another sign of maturing um you know i i top of my head and we played six or seven ball games i think six uh, we lost our first game four to four to nothing. We got really good pitching from our uh, our ace. Um, really didn't make many mistakes in the field, if any. Uh, girls just got base hits. Uh, we might have made one or two, um, and we got our leadoff man on first inning and second inning. Couldn't move him across. We moved him over. Couldn't couldn't get him across. So hate that we didn't give our 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 pitcher any more run support than than zero uh but then came back through the losers bracket and won four or five ball games in a row hitting the ball well we scored um in that stretch we scored like 10 runs a game uh, average which wow. was great and yeah. it was all hits it wasn't walks and you know uh ella had a really great day she did she did not make an error um <laughs> she had some really good plays in the field and I think she had four base hits, five base hits on the day, two of which were were doubles, and um, and the and the other balls that she hit and got out, she she just hit it hard right at somebody. So she hit the ball really hard. She swung at one bad pitch all day, <clears throat> and you play six seven ball games, you swing at one bad pitch. Yeah, that's pretty that's pretty good stuff right there. So really proud of her and our our whole team. We, we really played pretty well, and that was against good competition. So anyway, good way to start the year. For Absolutely, sure. yeah. And then and then um, Cody came and met you, and you and Cody and uh, crazy cousin Brock and his son Caden. Yep. Uh, y'all y'all hopped on a plane and flew down to Alabama so we could do our show that same night. Yeah, so I, you know, for those out there listening, I, I don't, and Jr. can attest to this. Um, I don't fly private very often at all, like maybe a handful of times a year, and that's out of necessity, you know, normally. And yeah, it's so, got to be somewhere time constraints, distance. That means yeah, yeah, to sometimes. And so um, I'm, a, I'm just, I guess, too frugal. Uh, to do it but but anyway sometimes it's ne necessary and i got to looking at uh i was talking to jr i got to looking at our softball schedule and i'm not going to be at as many games this year as as i 
have been being because of COVID and those kind of things and us being off. And so <clears throat> I thought, man, I, I may need to do this a, a, a few times. And so this was kind of a trial run at that. And fortunately it went by, it went great. And, um, I got to be at, at most of the games. I, I think I missed the last two. Uh, but, yeah, hopped on the plane, popped down to Lafayette, Alabama. Yep. Um, flew into, flew into Auburn, uh, you know, their regional yeah, airport which, there, which I was yeah. – uh, I was trying to pull in there. I didn't yeah. want to pull by the, by the, by the signage. I was like, there's got to be another way. I don't have to look at all this when we're pulling in to pick them up. Right. So. Yeah, I was thinking that, that that was probably where their team flies in and out of, I, I guess – because uh, yeah. they had their insignia and stuff and and so so yeah it was a good flight the pilots were cool and um as you mentioned brock and and caden he's been wanting to uh we've been trying to get caden out on a bus run for for a while now and because he's gotten older and right um and and so he was coaching with me obviously and the, the night before i said what well, you you ought to just bring him and jump on the plane and we'll be home the next morning you know it's quick easy he'd never flown in a private jet obviously and right uh caden and and so he i think he enjoyed himself and the show by the way for anybody out there listening that was there or from that area or whatever um <clears throat> it was awesome i mean the crowd was great i'm gonna be honest it was probably the funnest show i've played in 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 a while i I just really enjoyed myself personally and and, you know anytime you have an opportunity to play a uh a setting like that just real pretty area there and in um i guess east alabama yeah yeah lafayette's um uh, kind of a hometown show almost for you uh it's close to the georgia line talk about yeah central east central alabama but yeah i mean it it was a big field party in 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 Alabama. I mean, it don't get much better than that. That was pretty much what it was, and the crowd was rocking. It was cool, and uh, we played two and a half hours. Normally, yeah. we play hour and a half, hour and forty five minutes, and we were having so much fun, we just kept rolling. So yeah, but yeah, it was awesome, man. Yeah, real pretty place. Yeah, it's about an hour from where I grew up. Not, uh, I didn't ever frequent with that area much, but there was the the drag strip was about ten minutes from where we're at in Camp Hill. We used to go there to drag or watch people drag. But uh, but yeah, it was awesome, man. Had Dylan Carmichael on the show with us, our buddy. Yeah, yeah. It was great to see him and his bunch, and part, we got to hang and party with him some afterwards. Um, a, a new buddy Shackelford Lane opened the show, which was cool for me because their drummer. As my brother Will Hudson, who was my first drummer in any band I was ever with, with Wayne twenty years ago, so uh, that was really cool for me. And then, um, yeah, it was just a real pretty setting. The crowd was rocking. I mean, you know, three thousand people in the middle field of Alabama. I mean, what can you ask for? And then yeah. uh, had uh, thirty eight oyster Rick uh, serving up oysters afterwards. That was fun. Yeah, you were just talking about this on the podcast last week, yeah. and uh, lo and behold. He pops He's, in. Th- there he is. So, yeah, same and they were from- great, by the way. I think I ate about 10 in about yeah. <laughs> five minutes after the show. Yeah, it was the same guy, 30A so. uh, Oyster Rick. From, uh, he was at Cody Johnson's show the week before. And, and then actually, Lindsay, our our buddy, your builder, our buddy Lindsay. Yeah. Um, Hit me up, said he's coming. That he's already got that guy coming to a party this week for his uh, employee, you know, company party or something like in that in Nashville. I guess so. Man, he's created a little niche for himself. Yeah absolutely you know yeah that's really yeah. cool yeah he yeah. was a good good guy too right no doubt and um yeah i got this uh i want i gotta give some shout outs yeah chase bass did a heck, heck of a job promoting that show we had a great time there i want to say thanks to my buddy blaine rudd who has opened for you several times this one we were talking he played uh yeah charlie Muncaster from mustang bloodline played with him that last <laughs> time we played in uh auburn uh, but he helped out big time backstage. I want to say thanks to Blaine. It was good to see my brother Caleb King, uh, CJ. Always fun to see CJ. My buddy Ben Ratliff, uh, that whole bunch. Uh, my buddy Mike Diamond was there, and my buddy Justin Hill was there. And I didn't get to see either one of them. It just didn't work out with times, and it was kind of a weird <clears throat> setting because the stage was so far from the where we were at backstage by the pavilion. So yeah, hate to miss those guys. But uh, thanks to everybody who did come. Yeah, way to represent. Thank you, Alabama. Appreciate y'all on that. Um, hey, and talking about people who uh, we play shows with and open for you from time to time, we got a little special guest uh, about to pop on the podcast with us. Um, so, with no further ado, this is his second time joining the Justin Moore podcast. But we're going to bring on our brother, Mr. Heath Sanders. 
He's connecting to audio. He looks good. Let's see if he sounds good. He usually sounds better than he looks. Looks pretty good today. We'll see. Can y'all hear me? There he is. All right, What's up, buddy. What's going on, dudes? Nothing, man. Good to see you. Yeah, I like that you. hat. Thanks, buddy. A uh, uh, buddy of mine, old Baker Grissom, he made this for me. You know Baker? I don't. Yeah, he. Who's, uh, who is it? He well, he was on uh, he was on Red Publishing for a while, uh, but he he made this for me in honor of our song, brother. So that's cool. Oh, really? That's pretty awesome. I need to get me one. I need to get him to make me one. But uh, for those who can't see or aren't watching, it's camo hat uh, with a red bill with a red man uh, insignia. Yeah, uh, you, you know, I didn't know. Sweet. I didn't know until like last week that they didn't even. They changed the name of Red Man Tobacco to uh, America. Did they? America's Choice, yes, sir. Yep. You're kidding me. Another, uh, another. Leg- even toba- even tobacco. <laughs> uh, another legacy grief. lost to the lost to the olds of time, brother. Wow. JR, well, how you doing, man? Man, I'm good, brother. We were just up here talking about uh, a show we played this past week down near my neck of the woods in Alabama, and it was a good show, big rowdy redneck crowd. So um, we were just talking about that and talking about we got to see our buddy Dylan Carmichael and a couple other guests uh, or a couple other friends that play music. And then uh, I knew we were going to have you on today to talk about some new music. So as I'm excited. I hadn't got to say anything about it because I, you know, I was around mm-hmm. when we were doing some of the pre-stuff with Cody. Um, but we wanted to bring you on and talk about it because this podcast is going to drop Thursday, uh, which will be the let me Thursday the seventh. So on Friday the eighth, new music coming out. Yeah, man. That yeah. may or may not may or may not have both people on this or the other two people besides me on this podcast singing on that said song. Jr. might be singing on it too. You never know. You never know. You never know. No, I don't. I, I Heath, you just run with it, man, because I, I don't know. Like how and where uh, the release is happening? Is it is it radio? Is it just online? What's the scoop? I, I I'm I'm really kind of uneducated. I think we're just running this thing at DSPs. Uh, it may be a little rowdy for radio. You know, we uh, we really tapped into our southern rock roots on this one. So uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know if radio's ready for for a little raised on red. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, man, we're excited, dude. Uh, April eighth, um, gonna have a little album release party April seventh in Nashville, and dude, we're getting pumped, man. This project's been so fun. I mean, we've been uh, we've been working on this for a long time. You know, this this thing we've been playing this thing at shows for I don't know three years now. Um, so it's been at the top of our roster, um, and just bring you you coming on to it brought a whole nother energy to it, though, bro. It's been. Man, it's been a fun project, and I hope that's what people take from it. You know, we we scream red a lot in it, but I, <laughs> mm-hmm. I hope it's just enough to make folks want to run through a brick wall. Man, it's uh, just kind of one of those songs. It's a, it's been it's been a fun project. Yeah, it was. Um, yeah, I think it, I was sent the song. Hell, I don't know, a year ago or something. Now. It was a long time ago. I don't know exactly when it was, but. I don't know if I even made it to the chorus. I certainly didn't make it all the way through the chorus before I was like, oh, yeah, I'm in. Let's do it. Um, <laughs> and I, I, quite honestly, I didn't even need to hear it when I, when I knew it was you. I mean, I knew I would like it. And, um, and so, anyway, when I heard it and really liked the song, it was just cherry on top. And uh, I don't think – I don't know if there's been a song written uh, that, that – maybe fits you and i more to a t than than this one and for i don't know that we said the title but it's called raised on red um in case we we didn't uh so is is it just the same uh, just the song or is there an album uh yeah, just the same it, man. okay we're, uh, we're gonna put all our all our efforts <laughs> into this thing man and like you were saying dude i don't know you know i don't know if there's another major artist out there who would really understand the song any more than you do you know, I mean, we we talking about it. You know, we was hanging out at your house the other day, and mm. they got to talking about it a little bit. Just how the state of Arkansas, I mean, the thing's just painted red. I mean, it just is from the Razorbacks to, you know, to the to the flag to to all of it, man. Red's red's pretty synonymous with with Arkansas. Um, so yeah, man, it's an honor to have you on it, buddy. Well, likewise, man. It was it was an honor to be on it, and um. You know, if if 
If we get canceled for saying redneck, then I, I guess we're just gonna be we're just gonna be canceled then. So so be it. Well, uh, I, because I, I don't know. I think my days are numbered, anyways, brother. <laughs> <laughs> I think you and me both, probably. Well, but th- no, we did. We were asked some questions by uh, some media um, about that exact thing. You know, like, hey, what does the word redneck mean to you? Because it's obviously it's, it's whatever to this person or this person and and you and i have a different opinion than some on on what it means to us and and, and, you know it's it's blue collar hard working family values uh i don't want to put words in your mouth but i i I think i'm speaking no uh, yeah accurately here that's right man i mean it's a term of where we can i was pretty shocked to to find out you know, in my older age, that it was a, used as an insult in some places. <laughs> right. No, I call my yeah. buddies rednecks, but I'm that's a pat on the back, man. You know, it's yeah. it's synonymous with hard work and and uh, self sufficiency and and everything that makes us who we are. You know. Right. For sure. And so. red, you know, and and not just Arkansas. I mean, that's a song I, I was thinking about it when y'all were playing it, when y'all did some, uh, when y'all did some some media stuff. When I was listening to it the other week, and uh, yeah, I mean, anywhere you raised on red, I mean, it, raised on red man. I mean, you know, raised right. raised by rednecks with rednecks, and you know that there's there's all kinds of things, and you know, it could be as far as the the red on your neck from working outside in the sun all day, you know, or it could be I, I want to say the the original where it originally came from was the red bandanas that the uh, um, the the would be unionizing coal miners in West Virginia area um, wore to signal who they were against the the bosses that were running the coal mines were sending their militia men basically their paid goons to come fight off the union so they couldn't unionize because they people were just they were just letting people die in these coal it was awful as you can imagine back then mm-hmm. but uh, they wore the red bandanas and that was the rednecks uh, I think that's where it right. originally came from and obviously you know we took it and ran with it down here because it double implies as you look like all of our grandparents did and parents and everything. you work outside all day you're gonna have a red half our buddies now i you know I, I, i'm i'm sad sometimes mine isn't redder it needs to be i need to get back out <laughs> into my roots and do, you know more get out of these buildings and stuff but uh yeah that's that's what when i just just throwing that out there that when i hear it that's yeah. where i come from with it and that's what I always I mean, forget yeah. how educated you are jr <laughs> I really do. it's impressive hey, Brother. I'm a redneck hippie. I, I got that when I was with Wayne Mills. He had a song, Redneck Hippie, and it made so much sense. That's me. And the only reason I know all this crap is because I'm a redneck hippie and I watch a lot of documentaries. So that's well, yeah. high, high tech redneck, man. Yeah. Who sang that yeah. song? Who done that song? I don't remember. Was it Sammy Kershaw? High oh, tech George, redneck? George, George Jones. Jones. Oh, yeah. Jones. <laughs> I'm a high tech redneck. Hey, yeah. Hey, that's so cool. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so anyway, what what else you got going, man? Are you you doing a bunch of the media stuff like next couple of days or oh, yeah. label got you going right. nuts? You know how it is, brother. Just uh yeah, right, writing all the words and making all the appearances and taking all the pictures and stuff and I'm just ready to get this thing out and you know, people have been singing this singing these lyrics back to us in live shows for for years and so it, it'll just be it just be <clears throat> good to get it out to folks, man. I and the, and get the weight over with. Um I don't know. It's just, I don't know, man. I'm excited, dude. It's been what a year and a half since I put out new music, and so, you know, it's about yep. time, man. We re- yeah. we ready to hit the ground running here. I know. I follow yep. you on Twitter and Instagram and all that fun <clears throat> stuff. You're always doing cool stuff. But yeah, to actually have some music people can go to iTunes and find and get and you know and all that fun stuff. That that's awesome. Um, and I know here. I mean, it's going to sneak up on us before we know it. Here in a few weeks, we're going to be on the road together. You coming out and doing some shows with us on the Country On It tour? You bet. Uh, that's going to be fun um so looking maybe, forward to, that, to as do always. the song out there i was that's what i was just about to get to maybe have the collab out there if uh if y'all are since some i of those dropped shows. the ball on it the last time we were supposed to do that i really cool. love my songs but i i, I really really love them when your band plays them song <laughs> oh, yeah, bad to the bone dude yeah, yeah all you people out there at so one of these fun. shows y'all make sure to uh, get some videos <clears throat> of this and <clears throat> send it uh to heath and i and all of us on the uh instagrams and twitters and all that fun stuff use the hashtag just more podcast hashtag heath sanders hashtag raised on red and uh we'll we'll talk about it again we'll, i'm sure heath will come back on after a couple months we'll we'll chit chat and see if we got after the tours rock and see if we got some videos to talk about with it um but yeah i'm i'm stoked man i think uh, i think everybody's gonna dig it you know it's it's always good to get new music out i think that's the one of the good things about all this technology is 
Uh, a lot of artists can get a lot of music out. It don't have to wait, you know, just, just put stuff out and you leak it out, you know, like people do. Yeah, you're, you're right, man. I, w- I was talking to somebody the other day and golly, man, I think we're, I know, I know people are going to disagree with me on this, but I think we're living in one of the greatest moments in, in music history and, and folks don't even realize it, man. The yeah. access, the access that the fans have to artists now and the access that artists have to fans and their feedback. Um, and then the ability just to get music out quickly, um, Man, it's awesome! It's awesome. Mm-hmm. I mean, you, you got apps like TikTok and stuff that that are changing the game. Um, well, in the yeah, in, phenomenal, yeah, and the and the feedback that you get is instant. It's instant. You know, you st- right. back in the day. I mean, even when we both started doing this, uh, it wasn't that way. You know, I mean, you you had to put stuff out and then wait to really you hurt sales. I mean, you, you the only the only thing you could read about your music was this one dude at this paper or one or, yeah. girl at this you know now it's i mean the the hour that something comes out you can go read what people feel about it i mean and so it's it, it is kind of neat in, in that regard it, it um and it just I mean, you know it, it's, it's, it's just a different world we're living in we're talking about guys that 20 years ago cost you 10 grand to put to put together a, a session and you know and put it out you know what i mean and all that stuff and like you said the way feedback oh, least, would be would be yeah. would be literally uh mail like in a letter sent to your fan club right. or something i mean that was the way you did stuff you know and what, what i love that. most about it is the is the control that the fans have now you know they've they've kind of seized control of of the music industry again where you know we were you know, before, you know, a couple of decades ago, you called into your local radio station, <laughs> talked to your DJ and requested he play your favorite artist song. Now you just make a TikTok video with it or or you go buy it on iTunes, man. And, you know, the just the control that the that the audience now has and the fans now have, that's the way music yeah. should be, in my opinion, you know. Yeah, that's and, a great point. Yeah. I didn't think about the radio. I mean, I remember I used to be in the truck with my dad and – uh you know, you're like, oh man, I really want to hear that new Clint Black song or whatever. And you call in two or three songs later, they played it. The last couple of decades, you can call. That's but right. But number one, you probably ain't going to get to talk to nobody. And if you do get to talk to somebody, they may tell you they'll play it, but they ain't going to play it because they can't play it or they'll get fired for playing it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's, that's it. That you know that whole early two thousands thing where, yeah. where where you know the automatic playlisting and we kind of lost our DJs and everything kind of went yeah. Uh, it kind of went nothing to, local really. Yeah, it all like executives you know? are making all the decisions and yeah. it's, you know and now that man that's changing you know and and yeah. it's uh, but you leave it leave it to the American people leave it to the fans that you know to take back control that to to to, to gain their uh, to gain their. Uh, Oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Their voice clout. back. Yeah, their voice and their clout back, you know? Yeah, yeah. it's it, and you can, because everybody can make their own playlists and stuff. And I know for like, as far as like catalog stuff, like, you know, back in the day, you couldn't access all this stuff. Now you can go on YouTube, pick any artist that you like, and watch a thousand videos on them. Yeah. And I can remember, you know, um, you know, having a nice record collection or cd we all had the big cd cases in our trucks and stuff and cars you know with all the thousands and that was that was it that's how you dig around yeah yep or or, yeah six of them you know everywhere i remember having a six disc changer for the first time and i thought Um, boy that that's big time there game because you've ever sold somebody yeah now it's like a you always have with your phone like a million disc changer at your fingertips you remember the you remember the one you had under your seat you remember when you're putting them under your seat dude that was fancy stuff yeah Well, and, and, and like I said, the, the access to getting to see stuff used to, you'd have had to borrow a video or buy a DVD or, a, a, you know, a VCHS tape or a f- magazine clippings, this kind of stuff. And I can remember talking with William Michael Morgan uh, several years ago when, we, when he was out on the road with us about how that's how, you know, we raised <clears> up <throat> listening to these stuff. But when he was coming up, he said it was good for him because all that stuff had just started the YouTube. And he said, you know, I found out about Don Williams because I go on YouTube and I can watch all these live clips of Don mm-hmm. Williams. I'm like, ooh, I never thought about that. And it's just what we do now when we sit, and we, you know, always scouring for some lost Hank Jr. footage that we don't know about right. yet or something. And, you know, it's that's cool because you, there was no library for that before except for the music and, you know, some pictures on the albums or stuff you could find from a journalist that went to the show. But just, you know, it's – and there's going to be arguments whether it's not as it was better when you didn't and when you do. But as a, as a consumer like me that's just a fan, I love it because I can. I mean, I 
I'm, I'm never going to run out of cool stuff to watch or listen to. And I can pick what I want. I don't, I'm not limited to just the radio stations or right. just the Ed Sullivan show or what, you know. I, well, the, the, the opportunities and the exposure that this is given to independent artists, man. Mm -hmm. I mean, you yeah. look at some of these independent artists, man, who, who, who they wouldn't stand a chance in Nashville or L.A. or whatever, man. At least they get to get their songs out. At least they're heard. And some of these folks are building an awesome fan bases, man. And there's room. Mm -hmm. That's the beautiful thing about the music industry is that there's room for everyone. I mean, there's room yep. for everybody. Um, so, yeah, it's it's great, man. Another good thing about not having, you know, cases of CDs in your truck is your parents can't find them and burn them uh, like <laughs> my dad did mine. <laughs> oh. Dude, I had did about. Did that really happen? Oh, my God, bro. I had about $2,000 worth of CDs and my dad found Of course, my uh, dad's a Pentecostal preacher. You right. Know, Finding Led Zeppelin and Metallica in my truck. Oh, oh yeah. no. Uh, ooh, it was rough. It was rough. But He didn't uh, make you watch, did he? No, he didn't make He's not okay. that cruel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, like man, that like there's a there's terrible. a video, I think it's on uh it's on something. But there's a video you see of the kid out there that the dad has got the ride lawnmower is about to ride over all his video games. And it, it's not a kid, the guy's like twenty something, but he thinks they're losing his mind. The dad's out there, why are you doing this? The guy's dad runs over all of his video <laughs> games with with the ride lawnmower. I mean, it's just like Good. I'd like they to do that with uh, all my kids' iPads. Yeah, there's some uh, things in this world yeah. that can use a good the, the John Deere treatment. That's for yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah. Bravo <laughs> so. channel. If my wife's Bravo channel, if I could bundle it up and run over with the lawnmower, I yeah. would. I'm tired of them shows. Well, I, was, I didn't even know that still existed, man. I knew Bravo was a long time ago. She's still watching the Bravo channel. Oh, oh gosh, man. You, 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 <laughs> Let me ask every, you. I would say every guy that's married knows what the damn Bravo channel is. So that just <laughs> that just shows how single you are, you lucky. Yeah. <laughs> lucky SOB you that you don't have to know about it. I feel sorry. 12 for seasons of Housewives later, I'm ready to. Shoot them oh my gosh me. housewives of everywhere too everywhere. it's not enough just to be this place or that place it's it's like now it's god i'm like these people are terrible why are we supporting like, them i don't give a damn about the housewives of idaho and they're bad people they're all terrible Man, they, all they're, they're, they are they are scum of the earth horrible <laughs> human beings they're all they, they, they just, just are i'm sorry yeah. i'm not actually i'm not sorry yeah it's just, they're just it's not awful. good folks no i'm like why are we supporting these people self-serving like, <laughs> just uh, yeah. ridiculousness <laughs> all just argued and griping and fighting and like a That's bunch all. of damn teenagers <laughs> just awful so but <laughs> it, I, let's get off that we can, married, married guys all can agree on that yeah. one there though uh, so y'all get y'all yeah. get your y'all get i don't get my supper cooked for me but then again i don't have to live up to the bravo channel <laughs> and i don't true. always get that either I, 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 half time to cook too i like you know justin cooks a lot his house too you know uh matter of fact i'm i'm sitting here thinking like what 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 advantages do i have uh, over <laughs> I'm kid for everybody out there listening, including my wife. We're 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 being of we're just course. joking. We're this picking all, honey. This Love you, sugar. Love I you. Don't know, I don't know if me, Justin, and Jr. have ever had a serious conversation. To be no, so, yeah. no. <laughs> Take it all with a grain of salt. Why would for we? Sure. Why would we? Well, Heath. Uh, well, thanks for coming on, everybody. Dude, raised on red. The day after this podcast comes out, go jam it. Um, go ahead and preload it if it was as soon as it comes out. Do all that stuff. HeathSanders uh, dot com. Yeah. Or is it it's yeah. HeathSanders.com, and then it's just Heath Sanders on Instagram, Twitter, all that Heath, fun stuff? So Heath Sanders Music on Instagram, Heath Sanders Muse on Twitter, because it wouldn't all fit. Uh, uh, and then just Heath Sanders on Facebook, if you guys want to roll on there. Heath Sanders on TikTok as well. So There you go. Yeah, guys, yeah, come awesome. join me, man. 4-8, Raised on Red, me and Justin Moore, dude. It's going to be awesome. I, I just want to say, dude, it, it, I know I, keep, I didn't get kissing your butt or tooting your horn, man, but honestly, brother, it's an absolute honor, bro. I mean, four years ago, I was riding around in the truck in the oil field just listening to you, and now we're putting out a song together. So dreams come well, true on this on this side of the mic, brother. Thank you so much, man. I well, it. man, I, that means a lot to me, Heath. I, I appreciate uh, the kind words, and, and I, I'm, I'm just as honored to be working with you and – uh, you know, I mean that we've become great friends now and, and, um, I'm a huge fan, uh, of all of the above. Um, and so look forward to getting out there on the road and thanks for jumping on. Don't let them, don't let them kill you over the next few days. All right, try to brother. try to make them let you eat a sandwich every now and then. Well, we, we get all this over with. We'll, uh, we'll load you up on that bass cat. Get you out there on the lake. Let's do it. We'll, we'll do some ripping. Let's do it. Lip ripping. 
All right, buddy. Be right, careful. Boys. We'll see y'all here. See you here soon. All right. See you, fellas. All right, buddy. Later. Today's episode is sponsored by Bobcat. If you're like me, you don't like to sit still for very long. You look out the window and see possibilities. What if I planted a row of trees over there? It'd be nice to clear that trail in those woods. That's why Bobcat equipment is so great. Its compact size, powerful performance, and big-time versatility will keep up with all your ideas for your property. With a few attachments or implements and a Bobcat tractor, for example, you can do big things in small amounts of time. It's perfect for me when I have a break from touring or recording. Take a look at tractors, utility vehicles, mowers, and more at Bobcat.com or pay a visit to your local dealer. Hey, what's up, guys? Justin Moore here. I want to remind everyone out there listening uh, that my wife, Kate, has an awesome children's clothing boutique in downtown Benton, Arkansas. It's central Arkansas. So if you're local, come see us at 119 West South Street in downtown historic Benton, Arkansas. Uh, again, that's 119 West South Street in Benton, Arkansas. And if you're not local, we ship everywhere. So... Uh, you can find us at shopthislittlepiggy.com and see all that we have to offer, all that my wife Kate has to offer, I should say. And Facebook, you can find us at shopthislittlepiggyar, and Instagram, you can find us at shopthislittlepiggyar, but check us out. It's called This Little Piggy, and uh, see what we got to offer, shopthislittlepiggy.com. Hi, y'all. This is Brandon Bing, singer, songwriter, and whiskey maker. You're tuning into the Justin Moore Podcast. Visit EasyLiquor.com to grab your bottle of Bangtail Whiskey and join the Blue Collar Swaller family today. Follow us on all socials at Bangtail Whiskey for more news and updates. Now pour jigger and take this a second ride with us. Hey, gang. As y'all have heard, the Justin Moore Podcast has recently teamed up with Wrangler. Wrangler has been an icon in authentic American style around the world for more than 70 years. With a rich legacy rooted in the American West, Wrangler commits to offering unmatched quality and timeless design. As y'all have heard me and Justin talk about on here, George Strait, Alan Jackson, they're Wranglers. We wear Wranglers too. Its collections are also for men and women, children, to look and feel great, inspiring those who wear them to be strong and ready for life every day. Wrangler is available in retail stores worldwide, including brand flagship stores in Denver and Dallas, department stores, mass market retailers, specialty shops, Western Outfitters, and online. For more information, visit Wrangler.com. And you know you've heard it here, and you've seen it on stage, the Justin Moore Podcast. Dang glad to be partnered up with Wrangler because we're big fans and have been for a long, long time. Can't go wrong with a nice pair of Wranglers, y'all. I wear the Wrangler Retro. Uh, Justin wears the black one some. It's just it's my go-to. Uh, I get mine at Academy. So if you're uh, around an academy or just about anywhere, you can get you a pair of Wranglers, whether you want to look like George Strait or you want to look like JM or you want to look like me, you can get you some Wranglers and you can do that. Whether you're in North California or South Alabama or Montana, Texas, Ohio, Wyoming, wherever, a pair of Wranglers will get the job done. Long live cowboys and plowboys. For more information, visit Wrangler.com. All right, guys, that's Heath Sanders. Y'all go check out the new song, mm-hmm. Raised on Red, coming out tomorrow. Uh, always good to catch up with Heath. Yeah, uh, he's great. Yeah, and if he ain't country. Yeah, yeah, he's just a good dude. I mean, I yeah. feel like we say that about everybody, but um, if they if we have them on here, they're, they are good people. Yep. Because we ain't going to have a, a jack wagon on here. I'd yep, it's like you. I always say about it's like partying down the road. As long as nobody's worse than me, we're good. So I'm I'm the worst person that's ever on this podcast. Everybody on here is better than <laughs> better than I am. With stuff. <laughs> hey, but yeah, I had a I had a few things. Uh, we're gonna I wanted to run through, and I know we. Um, we yeah, we don't game. have much time today. Which no, I, get, I know. You know. We've been know. on here and for we've what? Got a, I've a got half, a fly, half hour. Yeah, and I've got a. But fly you got to fly out of here. So yeah, yeah. I got to fly to Nashville, <sighs> and I should get there in time to hopefully get to the hotel and catch the. Uh, Start maybe you know first first half of the game tonight. Got a big game, uh, national what time championship, six forty. Yeah, they don't start till eight twenty. That's what I thought. Is eight twenty Eastern or central? central? I think it's central. Okay, I could be well, wrong. I good, but I think it's so. in New Orleans, so it, that sounds about right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, should get there in time to do that. Big game. I know. Uh, I want to say congrats uh, last night. 
Uh, South Carolina girls won a national championship, uh, dominating Again. UConn. Um, you know, UConn has been in four straight championship games and lost all four. Ooh. Isn't that crazy? But to, just to get there, though, after having to beat uh, – yeah. And South that, Carolina – just tells you how good South Carolina is, yeah. God, man, Don Staley got it rolling over there. I mean, they're like Tennessee – Back in the day, or or UConn, you know, yeah, UConn. It, um, yeah, I, I, I'm. That's just it's crazy. Um, Who do you like but, in um, tonight's game? Who we got? Kansas. I was gonna ask you. You know, you know. I'll give you my answer first. Okay. Is I thought about it. I I really liked in the final four. I liked uh, uh, Kansas and Duke um, to be in the finals, and I thought. I re- honestly thought Duke would win it all. But, man, they played their best game against us. Yeah. they they I mean, they didn't look like the same team the other night, which give North Carolina credit. They had a lot to do with that. But <clears throat> so, you know, by default you would think that I would pick Kansas. And I feel like overall they're probably a better, more well-rounded team but there's something about this north carolina team man i I don't know what it is i feel like i feel like they play best in the biggest moments you know like for example obviously the the final four against their most hated rival uh but if you remember they did it also in coach k's final game at cameron indoor stadium they beat Beat Duke that was who it was. to it ruin was, that uh-huh. party, and then they did it again. You know, everybody's writing this storybook ending for Coach K because he's retiring. Everybody thinks, okay, that it's just it's written in the stars. They're and I I've not watched a lot of North Carolina, um, but watching them, the, I got to watch the first half the other night. I was very very impressed with not only the team but Hubert Davis, who first year head coach. I think there's something to this team being hot. I I don't – and to me, there's something – it would be something poetic for North Carolina to win it by going through Duke and winning it all in Coach K's final season because they hate each other so much. So, plus, Kansas has a really good point guard, but I think the kid, number four, I forget his name, from North Carolina, I think is better. Um, watching him play the other night, I was highly, highly impressed with him. They've got a really good big, and then the kid with the beard that looks like a lumberjack, Brady Manick, who kind of plays the three for him. Big, a big three though. Um, I, I don't know why, but I'm picking North Carolina. I, I, yeah. I, I just feel like they're hot at the right time. They, they kind of play big in the biggest moments. I think Kansas is probably a better team, but I'm picking North Carolina. I don't know why. Yeah, yeah there you go. Yeah, I'm. What do I'm you think? Of, I haven't watched enough of Kansas play this year. Uh, I've seen North Carolina play a few games, um, and yeah, they're long, they're physical, and I know Kansas is always really good to the number one seed. Um, but I'm pulling North Carolina simply because they're from the South. You know how I roll. Yeah. So that's it. I, I don't. I, I don't know. I, I just. I, I feel like there's something special about this team. I, I yeah. guess. But, I think it's going to be a good one. And uh, like I said, I'm hoping North Carolina wins. Wouldn't surprise me if Kansas wins, and you know. But uh, we will see. We'll see tonight. Yeah. As of the, when this podcast comes out, game's over. It will have happened. Um, so yeah, we got to get that. We got that going on tonight, and then we got the show tomorrow. Wanted to. Uh, I, I know we talked a little bit about um, some of the stuff, and I got a few questions I want to run down here. But I know we had done this before. Things I picked <laughs> up on the road. I had uh, I had some new laminates to add to my. Uh, collection back here so i want to show those to everybody real quick got the heartstrings of hope is what we did with um and for saint jude the other night in chattanooga that was awesome uh shoot got a good one here george Strait. Mm-hmm. that was good it's got my name on it too they had an in-house they made laminates like there in the production office yeah good i mean night. i needed some for your parents and they were like five minutes later they're ready i'm like wow that is impressive uh dylan carmichael got his new we know i'm gonna go see him one of these weeks we're off the road and kojo my brother Kojo had to put those. I want to say shout out real quick too to uh, my little brother uh, Shelby Lee Lowe. Got his new album. He sent me a copy in the mail, and my new country music makes me happy shirt from Shelby Lee Lowe. I want to say appreciate him on that. Good music. If y'all want another, uh, that's a cool shirt. Uh, yeah. If y'all want uh, something to listen to, like an, uh, is that an old school mic on it? Is that what that yeah. is? 
That's cool. Mm-hmm. Country music makes me happy. Makes sense. Uh, but if y'all want something to listen to, and um, after you listen to uh, Raised on Red, go get Shelby Lee Lowe's record. That's a good one. That's that's might be my music pick of the week there. If you hadn't already got that, um, do that. And uh, we were talking about uh, podcasts earlier. I want to uh, throw a couple of those out there. Things to listen to till we get back a week from now or so. Uh, our buddy Todd and his buddy Jimmy are back. They've got a new episode out of Every Playlist Tells a Story. That was really fun. Uh, they did a March Madness bracket of ACDC songs, which was really cool. And they talked about, uh, they broke down Stevie Wonder's song Superstitious, or Superstition, Superstition, uh, and Stevie Wonder's um, upbringing. Did you ever know there was a rumor that Stevie Wonder, they, that is he was faking being blind? Yeah. Yeah, but, I have heard that. But how would you, how would you pull a sham like that since you were twelve? And why would you? Why? why? I mean, I, to get an advantage? Because they said one time Shaq walked into the uh, to the <clears throat> elevator, and he said, "Hey, Shaq," <sighs> without announcing himself. Wow. But that was Shaq said that. Then something else, something fell, and he grabbed it. What they came up with is why I like this podcast. They come up with like I think I think he probably's been he is blind, obviously, and his other senses are really heightened, so he feels stuff around him, almost like sensory stuff I, I just i mean i don't know what to believe because i, I have no idea but yeah I, I just don't know why you would why that seems that's very what difficult you to fake yeah that's saying that seems very i mean why, why would you yeah you're right so go check out every playlist tells a story you can find all these on the podcast app uh cocaine and rhinestones like we talked about earlier also uh uh, my buddies over at uh, Ben and Cole over at Outlaw Country Music Podcast got some good new episodes out, so y'all check that out. And I want to say uh, what's up. Thanks for uh, coming out to the show uh, this past week. Our buddy Aaron from Whiskey Riff. Uh, it was good to see him at the show uh, Saturday in Lafayette, Alabama. Uh, and I had some questions. Did you actually get to see him? Yeah, he was backstage. Yeah, he was standing back there with me and Cody the whole time. Oh. Did I talk playing. to him? Mm, I think we said hey on the way so. in or out. I can't remember. Maybe quickly. Yeah, it was a weird day because you know we weren't we didn't have our yeah. buses back there, and I we was were, only there for a really a couple few hours, minutes. right? You know. um, but you know, as always, <laughs> use the hashtag Justin Moore Podcast when you're uh, uh, interacting with us on Instagram or any social media. Instagram, Twitter, I'm Jr. the Handler. That's Justin Cole Moore. Um, but I want to do something new here, so we can, I'm gonna remember to do this each week um, on the YouTube channel where you have the comment section on the YouTube. Uh, show where the where you can find the, the the show on youtube each week uh, there's always some good comments on there and sometimes i forget to go through those so i was going to blast through last week's comments uh and, and get those out there so that's a good way to do it too if you watch the show on youtube leave me a comment there and you got a good chance that i will read it on the show uh karen warren she sends sending best wishes to justin's dad i've had two knee replacement surgeries one in 2013 second in april 21 Love the podcast. Listening from the UK. Would love Justin to do some UK shows. Um, I just booked to see Chris Young in London in September. Hashtag Justin Moore Podcast. Yeah, we would love to come over there too. I, I know the we've pond. we've said that for years, but uh, yeah. But it. How can I put this? Um, it's not just as easy as the travel. Right. Right. <clears throat> you know, there's. You you don't we don't do this solely for money obviously but um, a lot of times you know you you just really don't know the numbers that you'll do compared to to what what we do here and so yeah. you know you can go over there book this whole two three week deal or or whatever and then you come back uh you know leaking oil and, and right. you're going, Woo. we, we you're went right. over there and lost one hundred fifty thousand dollars in three you just don't yeah. so there's a lot of conversations that have been had over the years and we're still trying to kind of figure out mm -hmm. um <clears throat> uh you know what the best way to go about it would be but right certainly but, yeah. would love to do it yeah, we've definitely talked about it, and it is something we're going to pursue in the future. Um, and some of this stuff, like this year in particular, we had some stuff that might have could have happened, but we're still doing makeup shows from the pandemic. That's, that's still, another good point. And the tour yeah. stuff. So we, we, we're just kind of getting everything back in, in rolling order here. And then um, maybe next year, the next, we'll start looking into some of that. But thanks, everybody, um, all over the world who listens to this podcast. We appreciate y'all. Um, and yeah, how's your dad's <clears throat> knee? Getting better? I don't know. I need to go 
visit him. Uh, yeah. But I, I, I know he's been sore and he's been rehabbing and stuff, and he's going to have a, a nifty little scar there. I'm sure your mom's tired of hearing about it. That long. Ooh, I bet. Don't you know it? Don't your mom's like, I just like, I'm tired yeah, of hearing about buck it. Buck up, pal. <laughs> yeah. Come on, Ray. Uh, Bush Heavy Int. I guess that's Bush Heavy Entertainment. Uh, week nine of requesting Justin to bring back the acoustic song at the end of every episode. We did that the other week. We did a band, you did a band song the other week, so you must have missed that uh, episode. Did I? Bush Bush Heavy? Yeah, we did. Uh, oh, the band. Did, yeah, 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 yeah. The other week, so yeah, we but, did. Yeah, we're getting, yeah, we'll get some like, of those uh, going. Three, four weeks ago, maybe. Yeah, well, we're gonna get Two, some of those three going. Weeks ago. Thanks for listening. Go back and listen to that one, buddy. Appreciate you. Uh, L. Cruz, another good podcast. Thanks to you both for sharing times of your lives and showing your fans how really down to earth you guys are. Take it easy. See you next week. Um, let's see. Ryan Phillips, uh, as a UK fan, I'm rooting for y'all all the way, but ultimately you, you all expose the number one all around Gonzaga, LOL. See you next season. Now, as a cousin of big Roger Coleman from Greasy Creek, Pike County, Kentucky, I also got to say, I applied y'all always speaking your minds and standing up for you support and believe. Tell Raj, Rhino was asking, LOL. I can't, I remember watching and supporting y'all when you started out. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. like at the Mac years ago, but I just don't get the time much to these days because the two little ones still waiting on Mr. Coleman to experience such a thing, LOL. Wouldn't that be something if we had a little Roger running around? Mm -hmm. It's exciting. Y'all are potentially getting back Coleman. on track after the past year or so of mandatory hiatus, but then, hey – uh, congratulations on the success so far, you guys. You've come a long way and much more to go. Bless this band and these guys. Good luck, gentlemen. Well, thank you to cousin uh, Ryan, uh, Roger's cousin Ryan Phillips from Kentucky. Well, thanks, man. Uh, Susan Walk, happy belated birthday, JM. Hope you had a great day. Thank you. Uh, Joanna Rozier, uh, happy birthday, Justin. Hello, JR. You guys are awesome. Watch thank the show every you, week. Thank you, thank you guys for what you do. Thank you, Joanna. And actually, I know I told you on a uh, thing, I've got something I'm putting in the mail uh, here soon, heading your way, Joanna. Um, this guy, Kyle Evans, said we had a bromance. I don't know who or with uh, at the 220 mark or 22 minute mark of last episode. I don't remember that. Talking about books and George Strait. Oh, uh, heck, that Merle book in auto form. I'm not sure about if that Merle Haggard book is in auto form. I need to look that up. Got a long mm -hmm. trip coming up. Well, be careful, Kyle. Uh, Justin Smith. We had Smith. a bromance, with, probably with George Strait is what he meant. Yeah, and Kyle, well, you, hell yeah. obvious, you've obviously Who never – or you've lived under a rock, never seen or heard of George Strait because <laughs> uh, I don't know what the problem is there. I think you're just wrong on that, but uh, whatever. Love you, buddy. Appreciate you listening. Uh, Justin Smith wants to hear more about your Ford Lightning, which we'll have to do that another time. We'll get in – we'll do on a vehicle episode soon. Yeah, that was a – that was a fun truck to drive. It <laughs> Would was, it fly? Uh, oh, yeah. It was stock almost. I'm trying to think how many they had, how many horsepower they had off the off the uh, floor. I think 450, something like that. Yeah, that's what every 16-year-old needs. Yeah, yeah, right. That was that was my see. My dad didn't know what it was. Right. He didn't know it was like supercharger, <laughs> and uh, you know, it was. It's basically the, you know, the Cobra version or Roush version of right. a, of a of a Mustang, but of in a truck. You know, right. and so the bed was so light. I mean, it was stupid. I mean, what I was color? racing people. I was racing people on the quarter mile and stuff like right around town. Oh, I the, bet. The, the, I know. What, no what color was it? Was it red? It was white. Yeah. It was white. Okay. White it was lightning. 2000. It was a 2000 or a 2001 model. I think it was a 2000. And uh, it was badass. I don't know what else to say about it. I, I didn't kill myself in it. That was a truck I moved to Nashville in. It was uh, It was sweet. I, I wish to God I still had it. But matter of fact, oh, five, six, seven, eight years ago, Kate, for Father's Day or my birthday or something um had a guy track it down and she was going to surprise me with it oh wow she was going to buy it and yeah. like have it sitting in the driveway uh, which would have been amazing but it it uh it was totaled oh. and so she's like i can buy you another one i was like ah, i wanted mine you know right same smell just, oh wouldn't that be something to get in it you're like whoa the that's the just yeah that, and that's a truck i had when we started dating and right that's the one that had the six disc charger i was just talking about it was behind <laughs> the seat 
I mean, it was it was sweet, man. The 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 seats were uh, like half leather and half suede. They had like the it had the white gauges at the time was kind of the thing. Yeah. And I mean, it was badass. It was so yeah. it was so awesome. But yeah, I don't know. I may go. I may have to go get me a a, a one. Uh, you know, one just like it or something. Right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, one day. We'll get... I was disappointed that mine is not out there any longer. Yeah, it's, if you could have gotten been the crushed. One. It's been, you know, yeah. it's at some lot having all the parts pulled off of it or it's completely squished. Yeah. You know. Now you can find you can find the squished metal and get something made out of it. Maybe, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, that's ridiculous. But uh, anyway, <laughs> uh, Joretta Lynn Corson. Uh, with you from Southeast Tennessee, thank you. Uh, Shana Lemons, listening from Malvern, Arkansas, right down the road from you. Oh, nice. Uh, Dora Woody says happy birthday. Thank you. Uh, sure Shots, listening from Conway, Arkansas, and Brandon Harris just says wow. So appreciate y'all uh, watching that on YouTube. Like I said, go to the YouTube. Yeah, I don't know. Wow, wow. I guess, it's just, I guess we're just that exciting. But, yeah, so go to uh, YouTube and watch it and leave a comment there. We'll maybe hit it. Um, wanted to say uh, – I've got a couple other things, but wanted to say before I forget, uh, as this airs, one of our best buddies, our health and wellness guru, Mr. Diamond Dallas Page, will have celebrated his birthday this Tuesday, uh, the 5th. DDP will turn 66 years old. I mean, it's insane. And he was at WrestleMania this week doing stuff. I'm sure he was – you know. Probably could have wrestled if he wanted to. Oh, of to. course. I, I mean, mean, just crazy. He's a freak of nature. I love him so much. He's got a great podcast out, too. Uh, Snake Pit, or DDP Snake Pits, him and Jake the Snake every week uh, with Conrad Thompson. Uh, really good podcast if you're a wrestling fan. It's the number one wrestling podcast out there. So if you're a wrestling of course fan, you've prob- probably already listened to it. Of course he is. It's Dally and Jake <laughs> the Snake. All he uh, does is win. Let's see. <clears throat> I had. Uh, Something else I wanted to do here real quick. This was from uh, Sunshine81870, Lisa, on Instagram. Um, She commented Uh on uh, when I shared a reading out of the Charlie Daniels book, uh, as I do most every day on Instagram, and she just said, I ordered mine. My husband and I read from it together every night before we go to bed. I love that you read from this at the end of the podcast. So... Um, thank you for listening all the way through to the end of the yeah. podcast to get that. And I know anyone out there, what we're talking about is um, um, my Let's All Make the Day Count book from Charlie Daniels. That's, so if you hadn't ordered it yet, that's what I read from at the end of every episode and post uh, messages from there on Insta. So it's worth getting. Obviously, I asked Lisa. She likes it. And I know a lot of other people have hit me up on that, too. Um, I've gotten a lot of use to this book. I carry it with me when I travel everything. Um this one was funny. I got this uh, a couple of days ago. I uh, can't remember what this was in exact reference to, but uh, it just said, tell Jus he isn't having a heart attack. That's all stress, buddy. I get it right there, and you can't do crap because tight pinch under the scapula. It sucks. Tell him to hit the green machine with you for a night, and it will take care of it for a few weeks. And, yeah, I'm a week behind my guys started going some large – deck projects over here in Geist, the reservoir where Corey Collins' house is. Hope you guys are doing great. Um, so that was Jason Fife. Um, put that in there. So when was I it. talking about having a heart attack? I don't know what we were talking about. This must have been a. Few, this must have been several weeks ago. That's what I was trying to think. When were we talking about? I don't know. Oh, this was interesting, and this was from our old buddies uh, Beats Beard <clears> Bonfires. <throat> um, Hey, JR, question for you and Justin. I've always been curious why country singers don't do what some pop singers do when they while creating tours. On a year where they have a new album, they play the entire album and then fill out the rest of the set with hits. Then the next year, do more of the greatest hits type tour. I'm assuming it has to do with the cost and effort to create a new show every year, but I've always been bummed when an artist released a great deep cut that I know I'll never hear live. Um, no, there's really no cost involved in, uh, changing your, your set list as far as financially. I mean, time, obviously you got to take to do so, but I think it, at least the, the feeling, I understand where he's coming from. Cause I, I could, I could, 
I could go to shows and listen to, you know, not necessarily all the hits. I know I like some of the ones that weren't even hits better than some of the hits. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> but I think the reason why that is is the overwhelming majority of fans are not in that same boat. They they want to hear the hits yeah. and sing along with the hits. And so I think knowing you can't please literally everybody i think you just try to you try to uh you try to swing and 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 uh you know hit as many people and what they want as you possibly can and i think overwhelmingly the majority would prefer to hear you know 90 percent hits Right. The casual I don't know if fans. you have a take on that or. Yeah. Well. Yeah. It's like you're saying. Yeah. The casual fans are not going to know the deeper cuts. And the way I would look at it is, yeah, that for me because I'm the same way. When I go. To and I a think show, even if they do know them, they still want to hear the hits more. Right. For the most, the, mo- the most of the people. But anyway, yeah. I, I interrupted. Go but ahead. well, you, and then you just got to know as a diehard, you're going, you want to see the acts you want to, and it's just a, and it's just a extra blessing when they, when you get to, or surprise when you hear a song that you weren't expecting them to play. You know, like, um, and, and, and a lot of, and they use, and you know, you'll do it too in your show. You'll pull a new one out off the, off the new album here and there or in different things and throw a couple of extras. But, um, you know, yeah, when you go to a show, you know, I can remember, um, you know, like I mentioned on the podcast the week one time with Alan Jackson, I was like, oh, I didn't play Dallas, but you know, I mean, that's, uh, you know, everybody wanted to hear, you know, good time more than they wanted to hear Dallas. Me and, you know, 10% of the crowd really would rather probably wanted to hear Dallas than right. one of the big hits, you know. And then um, – so that's just a bonus. So as a, as a super fan and a, and, a, and, a, and, a, and a real music fan, not just a casual fan, that's what you look for, those gyms. That's why you go to a lot of shows. That's why you, you're involved in the community so you can hear. Hopefully somebody's got a video of them doing this one song that you, that you wanted – that you were hoping they would do live at some point. Um, you know, because I know – Oh, it's been several years ago. I went and saw Jason Isbell at the Ryman when he was doing like a seven day in a run de- day in a row deal there. I went with my buddy Bonner had tickets and I just randomly flew in in time to, to go. And um, he played Never Gonna Change, which is a drive by trucker song that he sang on an album years and years and years ago. And I was like, oh my God. And it was one of those ones where he did play one of the songs that I just assumed he wouldn't play because he had a new album and a, this was in a band mm-hmm. he wasn't even in anymore and that kind of stuff. But when he did, I happened to be there and catch it. And it was even more special because I wasn't, wasn't expecting it. And that's just what you never know. Hey, and you may do that. That's why you got to go to every show. There might be that special show where you and the band just decide right. tonight, we're going to play the whole record. Yeah. Well, you never I, know. Yeah. The, um, you know, like, I, we talked about last week George Strait's set list, and there was some, not head scratchers in there, but there were some things that he had in there that I guess were somewhat surprising, mm-hmm. you know, to people. I mean, I didn't particularly love his set list. Like, I, I want to put his set list together, and I want him to play that <laughs> show for right. me. You yeah, know what ex- I mean? Exactly, yeah. And, and so I think for every artist, I, I think we're just trying to – it's hard when you have a lot of hit records and you put a lot of albums out, mm-hmm. um, you know, and we're blessed to have been able to do those things. It, it's just, it really is kind of hard to put together because, like I said, you're trying to please everybody as best you can. And so you try to give a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And you know, yeah. you got to play this, all this. Right. Um, it's hard, but yeah, I can also tell you as an artist, we're in the same boat as what he just asked. I would love to just go play all old deep cut stuff that I'd never get a chance to play. I promise you. You're right. But 90% of the crowd would leave disappointed. Like, right. why in the world didn't he play any of those hit songs? Right. Like, you know, I would love to go play a lot of stuff that I don't get a chance to play. Yeah. You know what I mean? But. Yeah. And maybe that's something that'll happen in the future. Maybe that's something that people will start doing at some point when you have a new album. You say, well, this these specific <laughs> shows, we're going to do seven shows on this album tour where this – It's like – yeah, you, know, you, you almost, set it up. That's a good that. I, That's a good thought. Uh, I don't even know if you realize you had it, but – like it's almost like you have to tell people. That's what I'm saying, yeah. You, you, almost you, like you have to inform them, like, by the way, right. this is going to be this. Yeah. It ain't going to be what you're – 
it's going to be the, it, 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 you know what i mean you, yeah. i don't want i never want people to think we're like trying to take advantage of them selling them a bill of goods and they get right. there and it ain't what they well you get there and they, they hope it, for well it's like you know i mean there's some le- legends do it i mean well, our, our, my favorite of all time he'll do it you go to a show and he, he just play whatever he the hell he feels sometimes and you're like oh man you know just ramble on and stuff but that's that's you know so yeah but you know we've heard you know whether it be like like jamie for example we've heard him going and playing shows and he don't even play in color and you're like right what <laughs> hey yes, you know but that but that might be an idea what what we do in the future at some point you do a thing where you say you're going to do seven theater shows and you're just going to play the album or something like that you start at the rhyming and you do if you you know that way everybody we're letting everybody know ahead of time if you want to come here the band do the whole album on this we're going to do this block of shows where this is going to be that or something that might be an idea for not just us right. but for for all artists out there to do something different right. inside of a or even, a, well, I couldn't do it acoustic, but I don't know, something like that. So anyway, good yeah. question um, on that one. I had another one here. This is from Troy Walters. Um, he said, uh, JR, comment and question for the pod. Y'all need to look into a young buck named Jake Blue. He is ridiculous. Um, so I'll definitely check that. Jake Blue, um, not aware of, but we'll look into. And does Justin have a dream hunting or fishing trip? Uh, this is going to sound terrible, but man, I've gone on so many great ones. It's going to be hard to top. I would love to go to South Africa and do that whole thing where you, you get a bunch of different exotic animals. Right. Um, that would be fun. I don't know about that trip though. Whew, it's yeah. a long way. Um, probably a moose. Um, uh, probably a moose like up in Alaska. I think that would be cool. Yeah, yeah. I would love. You know, we've been on some cool fishing trips, but I'd love to go on like a real Alaskan um uh, somewhere or, or up north. You know, for like a week, go somewhere and fish. You know, like I know, I remember my old buddy yeah. Lee and his dad used to. I know Warhawk goes up there and does that stuff. But go with somebody like that, like someone would want to come down here and go do stuff that you go, when you go to Louisiana, go you know for a week or out there. I'd like to go somewhere in good weather, not when it's freezing or nothing, yeah. but somewhere up you, cool where there's a bunch of lakes and rivers and stuff, and do like a week fishing trip of fly fishing or something cool. I hadn't really done much of that. Would be cool to me. Yeah, you know, there our, our buddy Kendall Marvel. Uh, started doing this thing years ago and a couple acoustic shows up that way and they take you fishing and you do all the you just do a couple acoustic shows he's tried to get me to go for years and years maybe we should take advantage of that it's always just at a bad time of year i think it's i think it's about this time of year quite honestly Mm -hmm. but it's always like i've got i would have to miss like a week worth of ball games or you know something like that right right um but so, I think that would be fun for me more so than like a deep sea fishing trip or anything like that. That doesn't deep sea fishing mm-hmm. just doesn't. Uh, the other fishing me. I I dig uh, that I want to do that I haven't done is you know you and I both have buddies who who do the offshore fishing stuff have boats and like the big huge yeah you know boats that handle that big water. Um, and I do enjoy deep sea fishing. Um, uh, but they go out over they'll leave at night and go toward the oil rigs in louisiana you know in your neck of the woods Mm -hmm. and where our place is and they fish all that that whole night and um for uh the big huge is it the tuna or marlin or is it wouldn't be marlin i guess would it probably the big tuna I think it's a big, huge tuna. I'm talking like huge, huge. Yeah. Now I would, I would like that at night. I think My that'd thing be kind of cool. Deep sea fishing is just getting sunburned out there and all and seasick fighting it and all that stuff. Oh yeah. Something See, like, I love get, I love getting sunburned. I'm a weirdo. Uh. Uh-uh. So <laughs> we got different complexion though. Makes you, me you feel. Know. Yeah. We, yeah. We, I'm weird. A little different complexion. I, it, sun sunburn equals uh, skin cancer to me. <laughs> so I don't yeah. get tanned. Most people are like, oh, I get a yeah. tan. I'm like, no, I'll get skin cancer. So, but uh, but I have I've been too though. You know, dad, I was lucky enough. That's one thing my dad really did like to do. So when we went on family vacation to Destin, we he and I went on a deep sea fishing did. trip every yeah. time. I never like, did until yeah. I was an adult. And he would know. throw in the pot where you catch the biggest king mackerel. You get the pot. He did all, and he would. That's what he loved. And that's one of my favorite foods. I can still remember. I almost remember the taste. I know that's weird, but uh, catching big king mackerel and then cutting them up in two in, in steaks, 
two, a king mackerel steaks like two inches thick and putting them on the grill at mm-hmm. the condo while we're there, the like day we caught them kind of thing. Oh, that was He'd the best. He'd eat it raw probably. Oh, yeah, oh, of course. Just check whatever <laughs> fell off that wasn't on the grill. He'd just eat it. Oh, yeah, of course. He didn't care. <laughs> Blood all over, feet cut. Uh, but we, you know, so that I got to do some of that, a lot of bottom fishing, you know, where you just basically you're reeling them up and they're helping you. It's, you know, you ain't do, you ain't really fishing, but, uh, but that was fun. But I, the overnight thing, that would be cool. And I, I have seen that no people and yeah, they catch a bunch of redfish and, and, you know, all the different, uh, cool stuff by those rigs. Cause that's a, uh, something for the fish to gather around, you know, fish attractant. Yeah. Yeah. Cause the Gulf is real flat and sandy. So any, you got to almost have structures for them to go but yeah that would be cool so thanks for that question troy um that would be mine so i guess we'll wrap it up just unless you got anything else i know i'm missing something but we're gonna be back next week on the podcast uh to chop it up with you guys and gals uh this weekend we're gonna be in hiawassee georgia uh saturday the 9th um y'all come to that if you're in the area uh, then next week, um, we're going to get a podcast to y'all. And then we've got, uh, we're off next week because Easter weekend. Um, so we're going to be at home for that. I guess y'all got uh tournament both weekends, huh? Uh, that's a good question. I don't know off the top of my head, but, yeah. uh, but I hope so. If I'm off, it would be yeah. nice to take advantage, but, uh, right. Or yeah, just sleep in to, yeah, Hiawassee <laughs> and sleeping in and, um so yeah you got to get going to the airport speaking yep. of sleeping i'm gonna go relax for a little bit i've been going since five uh Ooh. this morning it's it's now almost two o'clock for us so for that's a, full a pretty day full in, day so <laughs> far <laughs> i'm telling you and we got we got ball games tonight so maybe i go get a little r and r in yeah uh before we got to take off to got to get your pregame rep nap in there, coach. Yeah, and then uh, once after Easter's over, we're going to start the country on it tour with Granger. Y'all come to Pensacola on the twenty second. Uh, so we're going to kick that tour off, and then uh, on the sixth of uh, May, we're going to be in Huntington, West Virginia. Then Ben Salem, Pennsylvania. Then we're going out west uh, to Everett, Washington, on May twelfth. Kennewick, Washington on the 13th, and Nampa, Idaho on May 14th. Y'all go to justinmoremusic.com. You can see all these dates, get your tickets, all that fun stuff, links to the podcast, all Justin's music, all that fun stuff. Remember the new Greatest Hits vinyl is out now. If you hadn't got one yet, order it. They're in stock. Uh, It'll get to you in a few days. Uh, And thanks, y'all, for tuning in to the Justin Moore Podcast. I'm JR The Handler. That's Justin Cole Moore on Twitter and Instagram. Use the hashtag Justin Moore Podcast. Go see us on YouTube. Leave a comment. Uh, thumbs up, like, five stars, that, subscriptions, notifications, anywhere you can. It sure helps us out. I want to say thank you to our fine sponsors uh, and everybody who keeps this thing rolling. Um, and uh, country music fans, country radio, everybody in podcast world, we love y'all. We yep. appreciate y'all. And uh, thanks for uh, Heath uh, Sanders jumping on. Don't forget to go check out, I guess, tomorrow uh, as you listen to this, if you're listening the day that it comes out. Uh, raised on red uh, featuring uh, myself so yep. uh, check it out cool tune think you'll like it yep and you can hear justin and his buddies chop it up every weekday from six to ten uh on the buzz app 103 central the buzz uh mm-hmm. there in arkansas uh well buckle up get you some coffee before you get on that <laughs> ride it's a fun morning one. mayhem I'm, I'm gonna be a- yeah, yep. morning mayhem. I'll be on some next week. I'm going to chop it up with them a little bit too, but y'all go listen to them on there. And come see us at a show soon. Thank y'all for tuning in. We'll see you next week. Thanks, guys. This episode was brought to you by Bobcat. Check them out at bobcat.com. For any of you first-time listeners out there, at the end of each of our episodes, uh, I like to do a little reading out of a book I've had that I've got a lot of use out of over the years. Uh, the book is by Mr. Charlie Daniels. Uh, And the book is called Let's All Make the Day Count, The Everyday Wisdom of Charlie Daniels. Investing your talent, I was afraid, and went and hid your talent in the ground. Matthew 25, 25. If I'm asked advice about succeeding in a profession, I always preface it by advising to choose a profession you love, something you can put your heart into. Sometimes going into the family business or pursuing a profession your parents want you to go into can have disastrous results and make for an unfulfilling experience. Although your parents mean well and have your very best interest at heart, nobody can live your life for you. Finding yourself strapped down to a job you hate is no way to spend life. I believe that everybody has a talent for something. When we ignore 
that talent and choose a profession to please someone else or for financial stability alone, we are doing what the unfaithful servant in Matthew 25 did. We are hiding the talent we were given, never giving it a chance to blossom or take root. We're left to wonder for the rest of our lives, what could I have, comp what could I have accomplished if I had only followed my dream? Sometimes a little boldness is in order. Sometimes thinking outside the envelope or even shredding the envelope is also in order. Let's all make the day count. <laughs>